Hey everyone, I'm Dante. This is Dante Dakara. And welcome back. Or I guess I should welcome myself back. Um, there's this phenomenon. And it's pretty interesting. You see someone, just for example. And you know them. And they know you know them. And they know you. And you know they know you. But neither of you say anything. Because you're just not quite sure... You know, if they're busy or just what to say, just a little bit of social anxiety. And then that goes on for a day, a week, a month, 70 something odd days. And you want to say hello, but now you've not said hello for so long that you don't know what to say. And that's kind of what this is. So I'm back and I'm going to uh, catch you up on some things that have been going on while I've been away. So, uh, you know, enjoy this next chapter in the Tokyo Visual Diary. journals. Uh, I have many kinds. I actually um, sat down with a few of them um, the other day um, and I read through the pages. Um, actually, I have them all here actually. Like some big, some small, some short and some tall. Oh, you stink! All right, Dr. Seuss moment aside. Um, they all have one thing in common. They're all unfinished. Uh, goals, unfinished relationships, dropping off cliffs, pages still blank, much like my channel. Um, this summer I did a number of things and I mean, heck, into the fall I did a number of things and I wanted to share those with you, but I didn't. And I have a habit of starting things and then not finishing them, whether it's a journal, a project, a fitness challenge, relationships, not just love, friendships. Um, and I tend to lose focus, or I get distracted, or anxiety, or I just destroy them because reaching before reaching the end. Um, and lately I've been wondering why that was. So this summer I went to Osaka, and you know, I actually went to Osaka and Shiga. Um, I was able to meet new people, um, see new places. I got to go to the world of Harry Potter, which I'm a big Harry Potter nerd. Um, it was like a dream come true for the kid in me. Um, and I also got to go to Summer Sonic where I saw Kendrick Lamar in concert. And Kendrick Lamar is my favorite rap artist. I've been listening to him long, for a long time. Um, he speaks to the, like this idea that we must continuously, continuously be having introspective ideas um, and, and conversations with ourselves and being able to communicate those and communicate those problems and communicate those issues, which kind of ties into the reason why I made this channel to begin with. Um, it's just kind of speaking my mind and giving things from my perspective, but also to analyze why I do what I do and say what I say and am the way I am. And speaking of, you know, on that same line, um, I think that it ties into the journal thing because maybe I fear what happens on when I finish the last page. Or maybe I fear what happens on the next page when I'm really comfortable on the page that I'm on. Um, or it could be because I'm just so comfortable changing books. I can start over like no one's business. I mean, what's, what's a better example of starting over than selling everything that you have and moving to Japan? I isekai'd myself. For those of you who don't know what isekai means, it's, it's a, a kind of anime style where someone just... Uh, is reincarnated or goes into another world and the story takes place in that other world. But I did that to myself. So like, of course I can start over, like it's not a problem for me. Um, but, you know, I think that because of that, um, I can procrastinate and I can destroy things and not really have kind of a lack or have kind of a lack of discipline um, to see things through. And... Um, and 
I think that kind of extends to every part of my life. I mean, for example, my home journal. Like when I say my home journal, I mean my journal about home. And not just this home, but the concept of home. Um, I was a nomadic kid. My mom was in the army. Um, my stepdad's Marine. Um, we moved everywhere. And um, it kind of made this, made it, made it really, really easy for me to disconnect with other people and for me to just move on. Um, and it made it very difficult for me to call a place home. There, it's even, uh, it's interesting, you know, when you're here, you have to say, you know, where you're from. Everywhere you have to say where you're from, but like on a lot of paperwork, it's like, okay, where are you from? And I usually generalize, generalize and just say America. Um, but when I started thinking about what home is, you know, I, I kind of stutter a little bit. Um, but the first time that I never stuttered, or the first time that I didn't stutter, when someone asked me this question, when I was talking to another creative, uh, his name was Richard, I'll link him below. Um, uh, he's a photographer here, um, and a part of a, a two-headed monster of a photography team, a uh, media team um, called Millennials of Tokyo. Millennials of Tokyo, i to make sure I get that right. And we were having a conversation and I, I stumbled upon the words that change is my home. And Tokyo is the embodiment of change um, because nothing is ever the same here. You know, I, like the community is just always evolving. I mean, everything is different on the city, every little part of it. Like in the morning I could be walking or running in my local park um, and enjoying like the, the beauty of that. Maybe it's sunny that day, maybe it's rainy, and those, two, those are two different worlds. And then I could maybe have a sunny day in near the Imperial Gardens where I go running and, and enjoy, you know, the fitness aspect of Tokyo, like in one of the more ritzy areas, like, or, you know, more, more metropolitan areas. Um, or I could be in Harajuku, um, enjoying it, the shopping district. Uh, or it could be a Harajuku night where I'm enjoying a party with other creators um, at a local club. And all of these things are changes, like they're difference. And those differences, the dissonance between this and that, night and day, the park and the city, those things are home for me. Um, and in that way, I think that I'm really lucky that I found my, my place here because I don't think that there's another place in the world that feels like this place feels for me. Um, and I don't wanna make this a love letter about Tokyo. There are many other things to talk about. Um, but um, that was a big one. I, I think that the next, I guess, big book, and I, I dare say I don't want to open that book, and that is relationships. And relationships are a big part of the story. Um, it's not just love, it's friendships as well. Um, I've come to understand that to build re meaningful relationships that I must be vulnerable, but I also find that it's also difficult being vulnerable, but vulnerable because sometimes I have no idea what to do with myself, um, and I don't know how to deal with the things that are on my mind and the feelings that I have about things. And sometimes when I say them out loud, people don't take them the way I think them. And yeah, now recently someone said that maybe you shouldn't confide so much into people because your expectations for people to understand you um, are just too much. Like that people are not going to understand you because they're not you. And so when people miss like misconstrue the things that you say. They're trying to identify what that is from their perspective. And because they don't have your perspective, of course they're gonna see it differently. Um, but so many of those pages were left unwritten because I don't know how to feel, I don't know if I feel like I'm worth the effort in relationships or that I don't feel like a relationship is necessary for my survival but maybe survival is not the right 
kind of way to be thinking about relationships. And we'll talk about relationships some other time when I don't have to obfuscate uh, the issue. And lastly, and almost most importantly, most dear to my heart is work. Um, I've been doing a lot of work recently. I mean, in the summer I told you about the specialist stuff and uh, I can either confirm nor deny anything that's going on with that. What? However, um, I've been doing my best to um, find fulfillment in what I do, and I generally speaking do. Um, I My work aligns with my values and my actions, and, and all of that is to create something, a world with, you know, uh, greater purpose. Um, and it's not just, you know, for money, because I, you know, being an assistant teacher does not make a lot of money for, um, and I don't know how long I'll be an assistant teacher, but money isn't it, and accolades aren't it. You know, I want to be the best at what I do for the people I do it for. And I think that, you know, I've been blessed with the opportunity to do a lot of different things in the classroom. Um, and I've been able to find a better voice in the classroom. And um, I think that that makes a difference. And when other people see that, um, they put you in a position to um, really fly. And... Um, I'm just flying through those pages and filling them up as much as I can. And I think that if, you know, if anything, that journal is the most precious one to me and it's the one that I continue to write in. And, and yeah, I mean, I'm a page flipper sometimes with that. With that, I'm a page flipper. Um, maybe only that. Um, but for now, like, that, that makes me happy enough. Um, but I think I should probably end this, so... Um, I guess in conclusion, um, the thing is, I've been living my life in pieces. I've I kind of separate things, and you know, like oh, I have a journal for this, and a journal for that, and a journal for this, and a journal for that, and that ends up looking like this. And while these beautiful journals are great, I mean, you got Pokemon here and all that. All of this is one journal, and I need to think about my life as one synergistic synergistic idea that all parts are intertwined and all parts depend on each other for success, for happiness, and to thrive. And if I think about, if I think about it like that, then it's easy to keep writing, to keep striving and keep growing. Um, and in that way, it makes videos a lot easier to make. So I'll see you in the next one. I'm Dante. This is Dante Dakota. Until next time. Later. Let's hope it's not too much later, though.